morning everyone or afternoon whatever time it is you happen to be watching this video um, today I'm going to show you how to help your chickens out in your coops with cold weather and a lot of people have been worried about that here lately especially up in the northeast because we've had some pretty cold temperatures as well as the northwest Wisconsin Minnesota um, different places the New England states all the way down to the Carolinas have been getting some pretty cold weather. Well, today I'm going to show you a pretty cheap and uh, or a very efficient way of taking care of your birds in their coop. And most everybody already has a pre-built coop or has one in their yard where their chickens are residing. So this will work out very well. And you only need a couple tools and anybody can do this. It's very simple. It's very easy. First off, the tools that you're going to need are a simple staple gun. This one is a Stanley. It's a heavy duty, it's just because I use it for a lot of things. And I'm using 3 8 10 millimeter staples by Arrow. And a utility knife. Those are the only tools that you need for this job. That's it. Everybody, I'm sure, has got those. If you have chickens or something like that, I'm sure you've got them. Even just around the house, you've got these tools. Anyway, the last item that you need for this for this little uh, project, feed bags. Now, I have approximately 50 birds in my flock, and I go through about 100 pounds of feed every 10 days. So, I acquire quite a few of these feed bags, and I hate to throw them away because they're so useful. I mean, you can do a ton of things with these feed bags, besides what I'm going to show you today. Garbage bags, ultimately you're throwing them away, but or you can sell you can fill them with compost and sell them to the, your neighbors or give them to your neighbors or other people for their gardens or flower beds such and so forth there's no reasons that your chicken shouldn't make money for you but that's just one other example you can use to grow potatoes in these you can, yes you can grow potatoes in these bags if you're curious about that i'll do another video and show you how to do it these things are so versatile it's crazy but you need a bunch of these you need your chicken coop your staple gun and your razor blade and I'm gonna show you how to take care of your chickens using these so let's move to another position I'll show you what I'm talking about I'll show you how it works and how to do it and hopefully it'll help you out too so give me a minute let me move positions reposition the camera and we'll go from there Okay, I've moved outside now, so I can further show you what we're talking about here. And we're going to use these feed bags to help protect your birds. Now, the only tools, as I said, that you need for this job is a sharp razor, maybe a pair of scissors, and a staple gun. That's it. A little bit of twine. That's it. And I'll explain that in a minute. But I've got 50 birds in my flock, and I go through about 100 pounds every 10 days. So I build up these bags quite frequently. Yeah, I get a lot of bags. I've got a lot of them stacked up and tied up and put away. So everybody's got a coop in their yard. It doesn't matter what design, what style, what kind, even an old shed that you've converted. This will work for it. You just need more bags. The bigger your coop, the more bags you're going to need. But this is to represent down here on the ground, I've got an old coop floor turned upside down so you can see the framing and what would be it two by fours two by threes old pallets an old shed uh, whatever you can use this method in just about anything that you've built your coop out of here I build my coops out of two by threes and quarter inch plywood that's all I need for my birds because you're Coop is designed nothing more than to keep the weather and predators off your birds and your birds in. Give them a secure place to go in and lay eggs, to roost at night, and that sort of thing. But it does nothing to protect them from the cold weather temperatures. And today, I'm going to show you how to help solve that problem with feed bags. Now, there's three ways that you can do this, and they're all very easy, very inexpensive. You can even get the kids to help you do this. The first way is you take a, an ordinary feed bag, 
if you want to be real neat and tidy about it you cut off the top trim the bottom trim then you've got a nice tube you fold it in on itself and all the folds all right and then you just go ahead and lay it in flat in your coop on your coop walls and at this point if you want you can go ahead grab your staple gun throw a couple staples in just to hold it in place all right then you take another one and lay it on top and then you put another one over here and over here and you keep filling it up until you filled up that spacing to the top once you've done that then that's that's one method the second method let me pull that off there it's just as easy you can take the bag in the same configuration and roll it so now you've got a nice neat tube like this that's provided you cut the seam off and if you want if you got some bailing twine or whatever, I've got a little bit of jute twine here, you can wrap around and tie it off to help it maintain its shape. And stick that in here, like that. Now the key to this is you want to roll it as big as, or as thick as your walls are. So if your walls are two by, th two by four thick, which actually means they're uh, three and a half inches, you want to go ahead and roll your tube to match the thickness of your wall and then you just stack them in here to fill in the spacing the third way I don't prefer it but it, it works is to take said bag and crumple it up and then stick it in and fill in the gaps that way that's the third method. Now, you can't leave it like that because your birds will decide, oh look, that's something to play with. Now what you can do to remedy that is take another feed bag and I've cut, as you can see, I've cut the seam off the top and the seam off the bottom and split it down the middle. Now you can either do it on the side or you can do it through the print part, it don't matter. What you need to decide here, though, is do you want the white to show, like this, or do you want the printed side to show? I show the white because I found that my birds see print and even a picture of another bird and they'll peck at it. So to stop that, I just use the white. Plus, it lightens up the interior of the coop a little bit which seems to make my girls happy but along the edges you take and fold your bag in real nice give it a nice seam like that grab your staple gun and go down and staple it in place pull it across staple it over here like this Boom. Now you've just covered your walls and you've insulated your coop. And as your birds use this insulation, use the coop, their body heat will insulate the walls, add to the temperature, increase the temperature of the air that's in those walls and radiate the heat back on your birds, helping them stay warmer through these cold winter months. Plus, it gives you a way to use up all these extra feed bags that you've got laying around. So it's a win-win situation. Uh, if they get dirty or damaged, you've got two choices. You can cover them with another feed bag instead of pulling them down, or pulling them down and putting a new one in its place. I personally just cover them with a new one and it adds to the thickness and the insulation. So that's one of the ways that I help to protect my coop, my chickens in their coop in the wintertime. You can do it on the floor underneath the bottom of the coop. You can do it in the walls. You can even do it in the ceiling. Just remember, when it's all said and done though, you still gotta have ventilation. Because ventil if you don't ventilate, you'll get an ammonic buildup and 
you'll get a moisture buildup, which could give your birds frostbite, or if too much ammonia can kill your birds and they, they can't breathe. You can't live off ammonia. So just remember, keep your keep it ventilated, but you can keep it insulated. One final thing <laughs> that you can do to help protect your birds is like I've done here. And that is, I've wrapped their inside, their run, in plastic. That's uh, three mil plastic. As you can see, there's a couple holes. There's one there, one there, there's one over here. And uh, the turkeys have a tendency to peck at them. I don't know why, they're stupid. But anyway, you wrap your coop up, and with that, you staple it in place, and that helps protect from the wind blowing in and out of your coop and it gives them a place to get out of the winter weather, out of the snow, out of the the uh, temperatures. It helps, it gives them a windbreak and it's not quite as cold in there as it is out here. It's not raising it up 20, 30, 40 degrees, but it is helped to keep them cool or warmer in the winter months. And a lot of my girls will come out and go get drinks or as you can see by that trail going up there, their water bowls are up there they'll come out and they'll peck when I throw treats and stuff out here and uh, but they spend a lot of their time in that coop and yes there's 50 birds in there so anyway that's just another little tip that you can use to uh, help protect your birds in the weather winter